Welcome to Group 12's presentation. My name is Larry March. And my name is Fabian Robinson. Today we'll be showing you a gearbox design that was created to withstand moderate shocks, also have high humidity, high to low humidity, and with that has an, having an input of 1620 and an output of 90 to produce a horsepower of 10.5. Larry will be explaining more about what a gearbox is, then we'll go into development and or a final product. As you all may wonder, what's a gearbox? Well, a gearbox could come in different sizes and shapes depending on what the project is. A gearbox could increase or decrease the RPMs, the, the output or the input of the RPMs. Like Fabian had mentioned, for our project, it's supposed, it supposed to be from 16 to 1620 RPMs to reduce to a 90 RPMs and also to be able to transmit a horsepower of 10.5. And again, so the gearbox, it could be composed of different materials, plastics, metals, and a different type of combinations to work to create those types of either a high torque, low torque, depending on what again, what is that we, that design is. Like some of the things that uh, Fabian has mentioned that we have to be able to, to take into consideration high humidity levels. Uh, be able to uh, different varieties within uh, room temperature to about uh, 95 plus or minus uh, Fahrenheit degrees. Uh, go from 1620 16, RPMs to reduce it to 90 RPMs to produce a 10.5 horsepower. And uh, also to be uh, in a low cost, that it shouldn't be that, that whatever, whatever materials and different types of things that we implement to be in a, in a low cost. So again, like since in the gearbox, you could be able to create it and modify it as you choose to fit to, to your plans. In ours, we decided to be with a spiral level gear, which is in that one, it gave us uh, it, uh, it gave us a good accuracy. It was uh, smooth, and it was uh, it, it was be able to do what also some of the things that we needed to, to do, which was to be uh, they needed they needed to be perpendicular to each other and also be able to meet in the same plane. So, what is a gearbox? It has different many uses. In the next slide, we'll be able, we'll be showing the direction of rotation for how it, how it works. Since the mechanism that we chose it was a uh, is uh, the spiral bubble here, you can see that it has uh, the pinion and the gear. So it depends how it rotates from the left hand the left hand side or the right hand side. We'll be choosing the the gear ratio, which I will be showing in the next slide. So for a gear ratio, depending where you have your pinion, your gear, you're gonna have whether it's a rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. You're gonna have your concave side suit, the concave or convex. So again, yeah, depending on what it is, you will be calculating the gear ratio. We'll be talking about in the next slides how we did how we did the calculations and what how we came about doing our presentation. As Larry has explained. We use a spiral bevel gear. In this design, the reason we picked or selected the spiral bevel gear is because it has the helical teeth and the direction of drive must be perpendicular. So therefore we need a gear that can be at 90 degrees while the drive is being the wheel is being turned. The helical design produces less vibration and noise less than conventional straight cut or spur gear type. Well, some of the uses that we have seen of spiral gear are in locomotives, your local trains, your regular trains, um, marines, application, automobiles, and printing press. Some of the major stuff that we're using in application is for the power, the velocity, the torque, the precision, the hardness, the mountain, the corrosion, the corrosive environment that was considered, the temperature, which was one of our restrictions in developing this, and Larry will be explaining the material that we used in order to do this design. Some of the spiral bevel gear materials are as follows: it could be as cast iron, alloy steel. Carbon steels, aluminum, brass, copper, plastic. It just depends on what the uses are. Many of these materials have different restrictions to it. it 
they have the different um, different considerations criteria that you have to do when doing when taking into consideration as far as the calculations or how to choose and why would you choose the material. Like I say again, some other materials you might be able to. Uh, I mean, maybe you need something strong enough, but you don't want that it's so expensive. So it depends you what is that you want to do. It's a, it's a lot of calculations behind it on what to choose for the different type of materials. And like again, you can see just by, by going by the catatiron, it provides it provides a really an ease of, ma of manufacture. But then if you go again to plastics, yes, it's inexpensive. It's corrosion resistant, quite operation. But then again, it's less robust than the metal and it's vulnerable on temperature or changes of in chemicals. So depending on what the concept of what you want to do. You want it, yes, you want it in this experiment, uh, in, in this gearbox that we're developing, we have to choose something which is low cost, but yes, again, to withstand this, the, the torque, uh, give, you, to give us the, the amount that we needed for uh, for the 10.5 horsepower, to be able to reduce from 1620 to 90 degree, and also the different things. And again, and some of the, some of the, the materials you're gonna be seeing you have to sometimes buy, like from here we have to buy from different catalogs, so we have to consider different things on, on when looking at, so like some of these materials are not gonna be able to, you, you get them higher, the specifications that you need for your, for your, for our gearbox. Next, we'll be going over the configurations. Uh, for the, the spiral, the spiral bubble gear that, that we had, basically, uh, as you can see in the diagram, it comes within a 90, uh, a 90 degree. It will come perpendicular to it, and it also made a, they will meet the center. It will be somewhere around there. Another type of uh, configuration could be the zero bubble gear, which has a teeth angle at uh, zero degrees. In this case, we didn't use it. We went with uh, the spiral bubble gear. Well, some of the advantages that we have in developing our design was the high load application, the quiet operation, the shock free, the greater contact ratio, the wider range of reduction ratio, more wear resistant, no slippage, and some of the disadvantages are expensive to manufacture, um, great generator truss load, bevel angles must be compatible, high friction, high sliding friction, and in selecting our design, the following were taken into consideration. The, like here, some of the applications that um, we're going to be able to show here, uh, they have the they have the gear pumps, the agriculture equipment, and many more. So you could go into it. They have different type of use. In, in our words, we didn't specify. Uh, we just create. We're creating a, a, a simple gearbox. Less expensive than what uh, we we went for. Uh, we're looking at the Boston. Uh, uh, the the Boston uh, they have a a gearbox, but it actually was coming out to about three thousand six hundred thousand dollars just to develop it, and it won't, it wasn't simple as two uh, two gear uh, as, as two spectators. They were actually had four implemented more into it. So it's a different considerations on that you have to take into consideration when implementing uh, this gearbox. So some of the parameters, as he has said, and um, in generating and developing our design, we had to calculate the number of teeth, the face and width of the tooth, the pitch diameter. This is the pitch diameter. All this must be taken into consideration in developing and, di and uh, designing. Uh, or the outer diameter, the gear hand direction, as we said earlier, the rotation, either left hand, right hand, whichever is required, the pressure angle, the manufacturing material, mounting methods, in all this was taken into consideration in developing and designing our gearbox. We'll be showing you later on in the slide, coming up next, what was done in developing in developing the most cost efficient gearbox, we took application into consideration. This is the gearbox component design. As you can see we have a case the bolt gears, we have bevel gears at 90 degrees, shaft showing at the same angle. All right, here is the gearbox housing. You can see the bolt shaft, the shaft holes. One, we have a larger for the lab, larger bevel gear, and the smaller for the smaller bevel gear. 
basically we use 16, 20, and a 90. In order to do that, you have to have an 18 to 1 ratio. And the smaller gear will rev revolve 18 times, while the smaller will revolve. And here, we chose the, 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 for the small bevel gear, we chose it to be the pinion, which is the one that was going to be driven the gear. This is the one that was going to be spinning at 1620 RPMs. And we actually developed this because we did the analysis force where we were to calculate the tangential force, the actual, the actual force, and the radial force. And by doing this, we were able to see how, which one and uh, which one is going to be the, the, the pinion and which one is going to be the gear. So again, that's my one with the pinion. Here we have the larger bevel gear, which is going to be the, the gear that actually is going to be having the output of 90 uh, of 90 degrees uh, of 90 RPMs. Sorry. And when we do our calculation, when you do a ratio from 18 to 1, you will do you do get a 10.5 horsepower as required, and hence that's the reason we have all the helical. As you can see here, this is the helical, um, the spiral bevel gear. This is the bevel gear. The next one is your, your ball bearings. We use two, a quantity of two ball bearings in order to put it for the two shafts. Um, the ball bearings will produce a much quieter, freer flow for the shaft to rotate and have less friction. The shaft. The shaft has a lock key and we have a quantity of two. One is larger than one for the two different size bevel gears. It has a lock key to prevent auto rotation for the bevel gear. This is our video of exactly what happens when the gear is functioning. You'll see the case is showing it exactly the, as this rotates, as this small gear rotates at 16, 20, this rotates at 90. And that is our design. And thank you very much from group 12. Larry March. And Fabian Robinson, thank you.